In the temporarily occupied Sevastopol, a car with a Russian occupier was blown up. As it turned out, it was the captain of the Russian Black Sea Fleet Valery Trankovsky. He died at the scene. This was reported by Russian media and local telegram channels. A video from the scene was also shown online. It is noted that the explosion in his car killed the chief of staff of the 41st Brigade of Missile Ships and Boats of the Black Sea Fleet, Captain 1st Rank Valery Trankovsky. He was 47 years old and, in particular, he participated in the invasion of Ukraine. The media reports that the ships of this unit carry out missile strikes with caliber and malachite missiles. It is reported that the explosion and fire of the car occurred on Taresa Shevchenko Street. An explosive device was detonated in the vehicle. The liquidation in Sevastopol of the captain of the first rank of Trankovsky a successful special operation of the SBU, reported sources in the security service. According to sources in the special services, as a result of the explosion, his legs were torn off and he died from blood loss. Trankovsky is a war criminal who ordered the launch of cruise missiles from the waters of the Black Sea against civilian objects in Ukraine. In particular, he bombarded Vinitsia with caliber missiles in July 2022. Then 29 civilians died. In addition, he is involved in shelling of Odessa and other cities, as a result of which civilians were also killed. It is known that the occupier's legs were first torn off by the explosion. Eyewitnesses pulled him out of the car, but he died from his injuries. Russian troops have been conducting a major counter-offensive operation in the Kursk region for three days, trying to push out Ukrainian forces from there. However, according to Julian Robka, an open data analyst for the German publication, Build, the offensive has been unsuccessful and is accompanied by colossal losses for the Russian side. The analyst reports that despite the declared presence of up to 50,000 soldiers in the area, including a contingent from North Korea, Russian forces have managed to capture only two small villages, Pogrebki and Darino. At the same time, the Russian army's losses amount to 28 units of armored vehicles, including modern BTR-82A, as well as more than 200 soldiers killed and wounded. What a disaster for Vladimir Putin and his generals, the analyst emphasized. The analyst showed footage with geo-referenced maps showing the results of several defeats of the Russian military. The main attempts to attack were from the north and west. Earlier, media wrote that Russian military bloggers and experts reported another unsuccessful attempt by Russian forces to attack Ukrainian armed forces' positions in the Kursk region. According to one of the Russian military experts, the attack, which some called successful, resulted in major losses and a real fiasco for the Russians. In the area of the settlement of Pogrebki, more than 10 Russian armored personnel carriers were destroyed, about 30 Russian servicemen were killed, another 20 were wounded, and presumably 10 fighters were captured. The expert notes that the Ukrainian side knew about the upcoming offensive in advance, which was actively discussed in Ukrainian publics. The Ukrainian armed forces had the opportunity to prepare to repel the attack. Despite this, the offensive was not postponed or revised. It was carried out head-on, which led to failure. The Russian military observer called this a mistake, a lie and a betrayal and suggested that additional details would appear in the coming days. As a result, no changes in the combat contact line in this area were recorded. The offensive in the direction of Pogrebki, Orlovka, ended 
in a complete fiasco. Although there were no retaliatory attacks from the Ukrainian armed forces, meanwhile, Russian units continue to be active in other areas, in particular in the areas of the settlements of Darino, Zeleny Shliak, and Malaya Loknia. Taiwan may have become one of the biggest supporters of the Ukrainian Air Force. Former Pentagon official Tony Hu said Taiwan gave the Ukrainian military its surplus Hawk anti-aircraft missile batteries. According to Forbes, Hu's comments confirm previous claims about a US-brokered deal between Ukraine and Taiwan. It is stated that Taiwan's MIM-23 homing all the way killer missiles, as well as their launchers and radars, will complement additional Hawks donated to Ukraine by the United States and Spain. The Ukrainian armed forces can now deploy up to 15 Raytheon Hawk batteries, each with at least six launchers with three missiles and associated radars. At the start of the full-scale war, Kyiv had about 50 SAM batteries, mostly S-300s and other Soviet models. According to the publication's calculations, Hawks could make up a third of the Ukrainian Air Defense Force's weapons. Although the weapon is more than 60 years old, it is simple, reliable and highly mobile. The Hawk is easy to upgrade and works well against slower drones, cruise missiles and manned aircraft. Its munition is also compatible with the US-Norwegian NASAMS air defense system, which Ukraine also operates. Last summer, US officials negotiated with their counterparts in Taiwan to buy back about a dozen Hawk batteries from the 100 or so launchers that Taiwanese forces began decommissioning in 2015. At that time, a large shipment of Hawks were intended to help Kyiv resolve a looming crisis as the Ukrainian Air Defense Forces moved towards the inevitable exhaustion of its S-300 missiles and BUK SAM batteries. Since then, Ukraine has integrated a wide range of foreign missiles, launchers and radars into its air shield. The more different SAM systems Ukraine operates, the more different missile stockpiles and production lines it can use to arm those systems with replaceable missiles as they fend off near-daily Russian missiles and drones. Dozens of countries use or operate Hawk batteries. Ukraine should be able to supply hundreds of missiles with or without direct US involvement, Forbes notes. It is added that the Hawk is not in the same class as the best Ukrainian SAM system, Patriot, which has a range of up to 160 kilometers with an onboard radar homing system. The Hawk can strike at a distance of up to 50 kilometers or so, homing in on energy from a grounded radar reflected off an air target. The main drawback of this system is that its radar is susceptible to jamming. However, this can be solved by integrating older missiles and launchers with a better radar from NASAMS, 